Eczema, written by Head of Spectre, narrated by Brandon Dayton. A month ago, my boss summoned us all into the boardroom to break the good news. We'd landed a major client, an OEM automotive dealer. This was big. Our company was slowly starting to gain its foothold in the Canadian market. Over the past year we'd been growing, but this was exactly the win we needed. It would really let us strut our stuff. This is a major step forward for our company, and it's all on you and the hard work you've been putting in, my boss said. Pazir was a stern-looking man of Afghan descent. Although he was fair, and he was leaps and bounds better than any of my previous employers, I felt respected by him, and I respected him in turn. That said, it's not my policy to ask this. We've all got our own lives outside of the office, and I don't like taking you away from them. But the gravity of this project means that we may need to work some late nights over the next few months when the project gets into full swing. I'm speaking to the president right now about making sure that you're all compensated. His words didn't take me off guard. When he'd hired me almost a year ago, Pazir told me up front that he might need me to put in some late nights. I had no qualms about that. Up until then, I'd only actually stayed late once or twice. He'd kept us in the loop on any developments with the OEM deal, and it made it clear months ago that it would probably require some late nights. Truth be told, I was honestly a little excited for it. Bazir seemed to have a policy that anyone who stayed past seven got dinner on the company's dime. Free food was as good a motivator as any, and I'd been going through a bit of a rough patch after things fell apart with my girlfriend Justine. She called me a workaholic and gone off on me for never making time for her. She didn't understand or appreciate that I was doing it for her. We were supposed to have a life together, and she threw it away because I was willing to work for it? Ugh. I digress. The work seemed to be just the thing I needed to take my mind off it. I don't mean to be overly prideful, but I was one of the best web developers on the team. I'd been working in automotive digital marketing ever since I was a teenager. I'd been working in car dealerships since college, and even spent a few years working for a marketing firm. I'd gotten the job I had now because I knew our company's platform. I'd been working on it for years, and when I heard they were moving into the Canadian market, I was elated. I had to get in. This OEM project was my time to really shine, though, and I wanted to make the best of it. All eyes were on me, and I just had to impress them. When the sheer number of projects came in, I'll admit, I was a little overwhelmed. I'd never actually managed that many before. The prospect was both exciting and intimidating, not to mention that the head office based in the US would be more heavily involved in the process than normal. On the first day, it became pretty clear they'd be damn near micromanaging it. Still, I didn't let that bother me. I was getting paid good money, and I figured it was a good trade-off for a few months of stress. The first few days at work went fine. I spent them contacting clients and setting up the back ends on the new websites. I had about three weeks to deliver 24 preview links, and two more after that to finalize everything and get them live. Although most of the clients' live sites were scheduled to go dark on a certain date, and any client who was still live after that date would be resigned with their current provider. The eczema didn't bother me at first. I noticed it sometime during the second day, on the tip of my middle finger on my right hand. It wasn't anything I hadn't seen before. I'd had issues with it in high school and I knew the creams to buy to get rid of it. I caught myself picking at it a few times and quietly scolded myself for falling into the same old bad habits. Picking at it always seemed to make it worse, as had biting it, which was something I was equally guilty of doing. The late nights kept me away from the drugstore, as it was closed by the time I got off work. I didn't dwell on it, though. I could just make time on the weekend. Thanks, Ma wasn't that bad. On the third day, I started to notice that it was spreading. It had gone most of the way down my middle finger, and I was seeing it on my ring and index fingers, as well as the palm of my left hand. It bothered me a little bit, and when my hands were idle, it was really hard not to pick at it. I caught myself biting at it during a particularly annoying phone call with one client who had been grossly oversold by one of our sales reps and wanted things that were way out of scope. In my mind, I scolded myself. Biting would only make it worse. I knew that. By the end of the day, it was starting to look a little worse. My middle finger looked chewed and ragged. It would need to be treated as soon as possible. Later in the day, I'd found that it had hurt to type with that finger, so I avoided using it. I left a little earlier that day, early enough to make it to a drugstore and get a cream for my skin and some bandages, 
I figured I could apply it and then put the bandages on to prevent it from smearing off when I touched anything. It was an easy fix for a problem that I'd dealt with before. No need to worry, right? For the next week or so, I used that skin cream. The first few days, I told myself that it would take some time to work. The texture of my skin changed and it became smoother, like scar tissue, but the eczema still continued to spread. By the weekend, it was on all of my fingers. The tips had become cracked and dry. Typing or using a mouse had started to hurt, and I used more and more of the cream to counteract the effects. On Friday evening, though, I was forced to admit that it might not have been working the way I wanted it to. My middle finger looked worse than I'd ever seen it before. I could see hints of red beyond the dry skin and had noticed blood on my keyboard as I'd been typing. I didn't want to go home just yet. We were still waiting on the U.S. office to give us one of our twice-daily calls to go over the status of the projects. There was one in the morning and one at night. Listening didn't hurt, but I couldn't help myself from picking at the flaking skin on my fingers. I had a strong instinct to bite at it, just to get rid of it. But I forced myself not to. The biting always made it worse. It had probably gotten so bad in the first place because I'd been biting it. Besides, that was just plain gross. I was relieved when the U.S. office let us go. They'd spent over an hour going through every individual site, demanding status updates, and asking if we'd called the client that day. I'd found out that most of my clients didn't want a daily phone call, and I didn't want to make one, but I'd caught hell earlier in the week for missing a few. I didn't stay beyond seven that night. I left to go home and get some rest. My hands felt stiff and ached. My eyes felt heavy. I felt like I was entirely out of energy. I needed to sleep. On Saturday, I lazed around the house. My palms were dry and my stomach felt itchy. When I eventually took a look, I wasn't too surprised to see patches of dry, cracked skin. I couldn't resist scratching it, but the more I scratched it, the worse the itch got. I managed to stop for long enough to generously slather that skin cream on, and as I did, I noticed that I was almost out. Had I really gone through it that quickly? The cream didn't do much to stop the itching. As I sat on my couch binge-watching Netflix, I kept scratching at it until I saw drops of blood on my fingers. The skin looked red and irritated. It was bleeding. I grimaced and got up. Maybe a shower would help. I hadn't exactly showered so far that day, and I hoped that it might rid me of that awful itching and make me feel more like a man and less of a gremlin. I turned on my shower and let the water run. I set it to the temperature I usually liked it at, and then I let the water heat up while I got undressed. When I stuck my hand in to check it, it seemed to be perfect. That was good enough for me. I stepped in and let myself relax. The hot water felt good, and I did feel a little better for about two minutes. That's when I felt the slow increase in the heat. The water suddenly sputtered. The shower head shook, and I heard the pipe shaking in the instant before my body was scorched by scalding hot water. My skin burned, and I almost fell over as I let out a cry of pain. In a mad dash, I scrambled to get out of the shower. The burning water continued to flow, and nothing I could do would stop it. I couldn't change the temperature, I couldn't even fix it. My skin burned and itched. I could see the water boiling as it flowed down the drain. It'll take a few weeks, my landlord said when I asked him to look into it. The fix itself is pretty simple, just need to swap out a part, but they don't make this model anymore, so we'll have to order it. Well, what am I supposed to do in the meanwhile, I asked. Just gonna have to live with it, I guess. I'm sorry, but there's really nothing I can do. It still works, it's just stuck on one setting. It's not the best deal, I'm sorry, but there's really not much of a choice. It wasn't the answer I wanted to hear. Come Monday, I felt like shit. Showering felt like torture, but I couldn't go to work unwashed. My skin was getting worse, too. The eczema had continued to spread. An angry red patch covered most of my stomach, and slowly it was working its way up my arms. My hands were almost completely covered, and by god, it itched so badly. I could barely focus at work, and I hated it. Every waking moment was torture. I felt uncomfortable in my own skin. The cream had done nothing, and I'd run out on Sunday, and halfway through Monday, I knew I couldn't tough this out. Around lunch, I went into Pazir's office. Hey, come on in, bud, he said with the same warm professionalism he always had. Hey, I replied softly. I'm not exactly feeling up to par today. I know we're really backed up right now, but I'm really not doing great. I was thinking of heading to the walk-in clinic. Pazir nodded sympathetically. I saw him looking at my red, torn hands. 
His eyes narrowed in quiet concern. Okay, you get yourself checked out, alright? Take some time to recover if you need it, but let me know. I'll need to have someone else look after your projects. I knew he'd understand. Thank you, sir, I said before I went to pack up my things and head out. I hadn't lied about the walking clinic. Things had gotten to that point, and as I sat in the waiting room trying not to scratch at my always itchy skin, I hoped that the doctor would have something to help me. Something stronger than over-the-counter creams. In the back of my mind, I hated that I was there. Pazir had seemed calm enough when I'd asked to leave, but he always seemed calm. What if he didn't think this was serious enough? What if I was overreacting about all this? It was a possibility, right? Pazir said he'd have someone else take care of my projects while I was away. Who? Someone in the US? That team was already a mixed bag. Pazir may have been fair, but he had pretty strict standards on what websites he allowed us to launch. But that US team wasn't bound by the same standards. I'd seen their work. It was sloppy and reckless. What if he gave that to my clients? I couldn't get sick. I couldn't have this fucking condition. I had things to do, and it had to be me that did them. The doctor who saw me spent a lot of time studying my skin. I don't think I've ever seen eczema this bad before, he said. And you said you've been using a cream. Yeah, some over-the-counter stuff, and I gave him the name of it. Well, maybe what we need is something a little stronger, he opened up his prescription pad. Go back to the drugstore and give them this. It's a lot stronger than that over-the-counter stuff. Apply it nightly for two weeks, and it should clear up. Although, if you're not seeing any improvement after three days, I'd check yourself into the hospital. Thanks, Doc. This should do fine, I said as I greedily snatched up his prescription. I went to the drugstore immediately to get it filled. The new skin cream seemed to help the first night. The dry skin seemed a little less hard and itchy. It felt less like a carapace and more like real skin. I was able to go into work, and all things considered, I felt fine. The next day, though, waking up hurt me. Just the simple act of moving felt like I was getting stabbed. I sat up in bed, teeth gritted as I looked at my cracked, dry arms. I could see blood trickling out of the cracks in my skin. Flexing my fingers hurt. I looked like I was covered in caked on mud. I pulled up my shirt only to see a large patch of cracked, dry skin on my stomach. It was red and irritated from my scratching during the night. <laughs> Dear God, it itched. Getting out of bed was an ordeal. The eczema had spread to my thighs and they itched as well. In a sluggish haze, driven by routine, I went to the shower. I didn't remember the issue with it until a scalding water hit me, and then I started to scream. My cracked skin seared with pain. I could have sworn the hot water was making it even drier. I thought I felt my flesh squirming beneath my skin. It was the most surreal feeling ever. I collapsed against the far wall of the shower and desperately fumbled for the door to get out. I could see blood running down the drain, and for a moment I thought I saw something else. Something pale and long, sliding down the drain with my blood. Every movement stung. My entire body was on fire. I helplessly stumbled out of the shower and barely managed to remain standing. I felt tears streaming down my cheeks, and I hated myself for it. <laughs> Here I was crying like an idiot. I caught my reflection in the mirror and saw my own face, patchy and red as the eczema spread to my cheeks. Instinctively I reached up to run my fingers over the irritated skin. It itched, and I had to scratch it, and as I did it granted me only the smallest bit of relief. I scratched furiously, teeth gritted as I did it, and then I felt it give. My heart skipped a beat. Blood ran down my face, and I saw the flesh sag and jiggle, but I couldn't stop touching it. I tasted blood in my mouth, and could see a chunk of skin beginning to fall off. I caught it and slowly removed the chunk from my cheek. It was so horribly dry and flaky, it seemed to crumble apart in my hands. The blood ran down my cheek, but there was less than I expected. I could clearly see my teeth through the new jagged hole in my cheek. I could see my tongue inside, and as I looked, I felt dizzy and lightheaded. With shaking hands, I dropped the missing chunk of my cheek and went to the medicine cabinet. The bandages inside wouldn't fix anything, but they were better than nothing. At least I didn't need to feel the air flowing in through the gaping hole in my cheek. I called in sick that day. 
I'm sorry to hear it, Pazir said when he got my call. If you need time to recover, I can get someone to look after your projects until you're feeling better. No, no, I'll handle them, I said. I've got my laptop, I'll just work from home. I could hear his anxious frown. If you're sure, but don't overexert yourself, bud. We need you on the team. Yeah, yeah. I'll bounce back, I promise. Just need to be out of the office. I'll keep on trucking in the meanwhile. I hung up and went to my laptop to get to work. Working was next to impossible. My fingers left bloody stains on the keyboard. My head was starting to throb in a slow, hateful pulse. My vision was starting to blur, and I itched so badly. By 10, I needed to break. I left my computer to get a drink of cold water. Even touching it hurt my fingers. I felt dirty and sick in the worst way. I could smell my own unwashed body along with the sweeter stench of decay. Every little moment split my skin. I was breaking apart. I need to go to the hospital, I remember thinking. The doctor said to go to the hospital. Pazir would have told me to go to the hospital. Hell, he'd have driven me himself if he needed to. But I couldn't afford to do that. I didn't have time. I needed to tend to my projects. That was what was most important. That was priority number one. On the way back to my laptop, I found myself scratching at my stomach. I felt the flesh give out beneath my fingers and looked down to see flakes of dried skin spilling out onto the ground. A little bit of blood trickled out of my new hole. This one is about the diameter of a toonie. I could have easily slid two fingers inside, and when I did, I felt strands of wiggling flesh and what I think was intestine. I retched and pulled my fingers out, dragging a bit of twisted, rotten flesh with it. Something hit the ground with a wet plop, and I looked down to see what it was. At first, I thought it was my own entrails, or at least a piece of them. But this was too neat. It was pale white, and writhed on the ground like... like a worm. Slowly it moved towards me, clumsily feeling its way across the ground. I stomped down on it and felt it squish beneath my slipper. A dull sickness filled my stomach. A worm. Why the fuck had a worm come out of a hole in my body? I looked down at my stomach again, looking at the hole in the dried skin beside it. I itched. It all itched so deeply. But I needed to know. I sunk my fingers into the reddened flesh. My skin was basically a crust, and like a crust it peeled off in a single piece once I started to pull. A sick squelching sound filled the room, and to my horror, I saw my own entrails peeking out of the new split in my belly. It hurt. It itched. But I needed to know. I saw fat pale worms wiggling through the wound. Some were tangled in my intestines, and others fell wetly to the floor where they blindly flailed about in search of a home. I stumbled away from them, falling into my couch. My torn stomach hung half open like a partially open tangerine, and I had to struggle to hold it shut. My breath came in rapid, frantic pants. I didn't know what was happening, but <laughs> it wasn't just eczema. Now I'm writing this. The worms that got out either died or are too far away for me to kill. I'm lucky my laptop was nearby. At least I can tell people what's happening to me. I don't know what caused this. I don't know if it can be fixed. I don't know if I'm going to die or not. I just want to wake up from this nightmare. But I can't. I can feel the worms slithering through my guts. Eating me. Rotting me from the inside out. I'm dying, and there's nothing I can do to stop it. I think I'm going to go now. I need to finish my projects.